Okay, hi and welcome back. So today we're going to continue even further our discussion of differential equations. We've seen separation of variables, we've seen slope fields. Today we're going to talk about Euler's method. So Euler's method provides us a really neat way of doing approximations uh, with some complex functions. So let's take a look into what Euler's method is all about. So this is called Euler's method to approximate differential equations. And the idea behind all this is something called a local linearity. And using this uh, idea of local linearity allows us to create approximations. So what that means is each approximation of a particular value will be based on previous uh, calculations, but based off of locations very close to it. Seems a little bit abstract now, but once we get a little bit more into it, hopefully it'll make sense. And if not, we can always make another video on it. So the idea is that we'll use Euler's method to approximate the location of a point on some curve. So we'll call this point x sub f. And we do this when we're given an initial value problem and perhaps some sort of starting point, x naught. So we're going to jump our way from x naught to xf and use previous values. So the technique is outlined as follows. We'll use the slope at x0 to create a tangent segment, and the length of the segment is predetermined, and it's called our step size. And then we'll use the next seg segment, uses the slope at x1, which is at the end of the previous segment, to find the next point x2. And we repeat this process until we reach the target point. So this is our equation, where we're predicting the y values using the previous y value plus our step size times the slope of the tangent line. And it seems quite confusing, so let's go through an example and see what's up. So we'll let y of x be the particular solution to this differential equation here, with the initial condition f of 0 equals 1. And just with this, our goal is to approximate what f of 1.5 is, using 5 equal step sizes. So first we want to find what our step sizes are. So we go, we're going to start at our initial condition, and this is our final. So this is our x sub f, and this is our x naught. So we're traveling 1.5, we need 5 equal step sizes. So if we do this kind of division here, we get step size of 0.3. So we create this little table here, starting with our initial point, and then creating these steps, incrementing by 0.3 until we reach our final destination of 1.5. We're given at x equals 0, our y value is 1. So now we would want to find the y value at 0.3, which is the next step. And we'll use this formula here. So y sub 1, uh, so this right here, we'll call this x sub 0, 0.3 is x sub 1, 0.6 will be x sub 2, this will be x sub 3, x sub 4, x sub 5. And I've already written the y value, uh, y sub 1, but let's pretend we didn't know this and we had to calculate it. This is how we calculate it. We use that formula from above. So y naught is the previous y value, which is 1. Delta x is our step size, which is 0.3. And then dy dx, to get our uh, slope, the slope of the tangent line, we'll use what we're given, dy dx equals x minus y. So this is our equation. And then we're going to rely on the previous values of x and y, so 0 and 1. And we plug everything into this e equation, and we see that y sub 1 may be approximately equal to 0.7. So that's how we get this value. So now we would want to compute this value. So let's start to hypothesize what that would look like. So using the formula y sub 2 equals y sub 1 plus delta x times dy dx, which is x minus y. So y sub 1 is 0 0.7. Delta x is still 0.3. And then x minus y would be 0 0.3 minus 0 0.7, right, coming from these values here. And sure enough, that's exactly what we do for y sub 2. We get 0 0.58. 
So we put fill in 0.58 in the table. Then we have to move to 0.9, and we do the same formula, except this value relies on the previous step. So notice that when we're working on this box right here, uh, let's pretend we don't have this 0.586, when we're trying to solve for y of this box right here, we only rely on the information in this box. We don't care about what happened here, because this box depended on this box here, and nothing here, and so on. So it's only the predecessor to it. But again, it's using the same formula, and note how delta x is always 0.3 here, because that's the size of our step, and we note that we use x minus y, because that's what dy dx is, and then we see that each of these values comes from the previous box. And we continue doing that until we get to our value of 1.5. And once we're here, we have this value 0 0.83614, so that means we approximate f of 1.5 equals 0.83614. That's what Euler's method is. So let's do our own trial here. So we're given dy dx equals 2x plus y, with y equals 1, y of 1 equals 3, and we want to approximate y of 0 using Euler's method with four equal step sizes. So the first thing we want to do is compute our step size. So this will be our starting point. This will be our final point. So our delta x should be our final minus the initial divided by how many step sizes we want, which is four. So this is negative 0.25. So we'll start filling out the table. We'll start at x equals 1, then we go down to 0.75, then 0 0.5, 0 0.25, until we finally reach 0. We're given y of 1 equals 3, so we can fill that out. Now we just have to use that equation to get our next points. So y sub 1, uh, I'll, I'll just, let me use pink here, so this is like x sub 1, this is x sub 2, and then obviously everything below x sub i is y sub i. So using the formula, y sub 1 equals, uh, actually let me change this, because I want to be consistent with my original notation. Uh, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, we'll do y sub 2 here. So that's going to be y sub 1 plus delta x times dy dx. And dy dx were given to be 2x plus y, so we'll just write that instead. So y sub 2 is going to be equal to, well, what's y sub 1? That's going to be the previous y value, which is 3, plus delta x, in this case, is a negative 0.25. And then 2x plus y, we use these values from before. So this is 2 times 1 plus 3. So this would be 3 plus negative 0 0.25 times 5. That's equal to 1.75. So we can fill that value in right here. Okay, so now we do y sub 3. That's equal to y sub 2 plus delta x times 2x plus y. And then again, use the previous value, so this time 1.75 plus negative 0.25 times 2 times 0 0.5 plus 1.75. And we can compute this out. Uh, this should be 0 0.9375. And we do it again. So it's a very uh, laborious and tedious process, but it is part of what we have to do, so... 2x plus y, and again, this box only relies on the previous box's information. So this would be 0 0.9375 plus delta x is still 0 0.25. Here we do 2 times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.9375, and that will be equal to 0 0.45325. Four, five, three, one, two, five, and finally we reach our target. So same equation here, just with different values. 
uh, sorry, that should not be an equal sign. And this would be equal to 0 0.453125 plus negative 0 0.25 times 2 times 0 0.25 plus, I hope I don't run out of room, 3125. And we can compute that out, and that will give us 0 0.2148. Four, three, seven, five. And that is our approximation at the point uh, x equals zero. So the, there's a couple things about Euler's method. Like, it's tedious and a little bit annoying and repetitive, understandably so. But the great thing is we can predict what our solutions will approximately be, right? Just by given this dy dx and some initial condition, we can approximate what our solution value will be when x equals 0, or rather x equals 0.25, or pretty much any other value with however many step sizes you use. So an interesting thing to note about Euler's method is the more step sizes you have, um, or sorry, the more steps you have, the closer your approximation will be to the correct answer. If you have less step sizes than your approximation will be a little bit worse. And perhaps it would be interesting to try this with only two equal step sizes. So going from 1 to 0.5 and 0.5 to 0, and see if this approximation is better or worse than with two step sizes. This is Euler's method, and that's your third method that you can use when handling differential equations. So yeah, hope you hopefully you learned something, and hope to see you in the next video more on differential equations solving problems in practice.